Hitler now began to make his own interpretation of these two pieces of evidence. Stalin's rapacity in Romania and Churchill's approach. Before the war, Hitler had described to his adjutant his secretive mental processes. Bear in mind that my brain works like a calculating machine. Each person who makes a presentation to me introduces into this calculating machine a small wheel of information. There forms a certain picture or a number on each wheel. I press a button and there flashes into my mind the sum of all this information. Now the Hitler calculating machine began to build a conspiracy theory, which would have devastating consequences. On July the 6th, 1940, Hitler, the victor in Europe, returned to Berlin to a hero's welcome. Our wonderful July sun shines all over the place. An unimaginable ecstasy fills the city. The crowd roars. The station looks like a great banqueting hall. Then the Führer arrives. A roar of joy fills the station. On this day, Hitler's army chief, General Keitel, called him the greatest warlord in history. But amid his triumph, Hitler was increasingly tormented by one overriding thought. As far as he was concerned, he had won the war. So why did the British not recognize that fact and make peace with him? He began to convince himself that there must be some external factor that Britain and Churchill were relying on. A week after the Day of Glory in Berlin, General Halder recorded a momentous development in Hitler's reasoning. 13th of July, 1940. The Führer is greatly puzzled by Britain's persistent unwillingness to make peace. He sees the answer in Britain's hope in Russia. On July the 19th, 1940, in a speech to the Reichstag, Hitler made his final plea for peace to Britain. Churchill and the British were not interested. Later that day, a further wheel of information from the United States entered Hitler's mind. Franklin Roosevelt was nominated by the Democrat Party to run for president for the third time. His acceptance speech contained an attack on Nazi aggression. Hitler was now seeing spectres across the globe. 22nd of July, 1940. Führer's view. Reasons for continuation of war by Britain. One, it hopes for a change in America. Two, it puts hope in Russia. Stalin is flirting with Britain to keep her in the war and tie us down. Hitler retreated to the mountains of Obersalzburg. The delusion was building. Here, the summer before, he'd been dreaming up his pact with Stalin. Now, he suspected him. At the end of July, he announced to his generals the results of weeks of agonized reflection. 31st of July, 1940, 11.30, Berghof. Führer concludes, Russia is the factor on which Britain is relying the most. Something must have happened in London. The British were completely down. Now they have perked up again. With Russia smashed, Britain's last hope would be shattered. The sooner Russia is crushed, the better.
If we were to start in May 1941, we would have five months to finish the job. It was, as yet, only an idea. But two enormous delusions. The first, that he had already won the war, and the second, that some secret deal was brewing between Britain and Russia, were leading Hitler down the road to catastrophe. The autumn of 1940 now brought four long months of frustration. The RAF defeated the Luftwaffe in the Battle of Britain. Plans for a cross-channel invasion were quietly shelved. Yet despite these setbacks, Hitler kidded himself that he'd done enough. 15th of October, 1940. Führer on military situation, war is won. Rest is mere question of time. But Hitler could still not force the British to come to terms. And he had become split-minded about Russia, moving troops nearer her borders, but also wanting Stalin to join him in the fight against Britain. Hitler's adjutant, Major Gerhard Engel, noted in his diary. 4th of November, 1940. Führer visibly depressed. He conveys the impression that at the moment he does not know how things should proceed. Then came the defining moment. On November the 12th, 1940, the Russian foreign minister, Vyacheslav Molotov, arrived in Berlin at Hitler's invitation. Molotov was given the full Nazi fanfare, but the conversations that followed were tense. Hitler's purpose in summoning Molotov was to offer Russia a share in the spoils of victory if it helped him finish off the British. He told him, England's final capitulation is just a matter of time. Fragments of its empire will be left all over the world. It's time to think about division of this property without a master after our victory. But Stalin wasn't interested in joining Hitler's war or speculative carve-ups of the British Empire. His instructions to Molotov were to find out what Hitler's troops were up to in Finland and Romania, places right on his doorstep. Molotov put the questions bluntly. Hitler gave vague reassurances. Despite the superficial courtesies, Molotov's cold arrogance and his needling on the question of territory in Eastern Europe infuriated Hitler, and it reinvigorated him. 15th of November 1940. The talks had shown where the Russian plans were heading. Molotov had let the cat out of the bag. Führer was really relieved. It would not even remain a marriage of convenience. When Molotov reported back to Moscow on the talks in Berlin, Stalin realized that Hitler was turning against him. In early December, he told his generals, We know that Hitler is intoxicated by his victories and believes that the Red Army will need at least four years to prepare for war. Obviously, four years would be more than enough for us, but we must be ready much earlier. We will try to delay the war for another two years. <laughs> 